Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're going to discuss um, memory, or not memory, sorry, attention and concentration problems after stroke. So we've done a, I've done a couple of videos on post-stroke fatigue. Now we're going to do a video on your concentration and your attention span, attention levels after a stroke. So first off, let me just say a few things. Um, so we've got some new subscribers. We've gotten a, yeah, no, I've got new subscribers. That's enough out of you. Um, up to 87 subscribers today. So Kanye79, uh, thank you for joining. I notice again, I'm one of the smallest YouTubers, if the, not the smallest YouTuber you subscribe to. Then JJ71Hope, again, hi there, JJ71Hope. Again, I'm also the smallest YouTube subscriber or channel that you subscribe to. Um, and then Salmon Huage, uh, again, hello again. And if I've forgotten about you, just wanna make sure, one second. Uh, Pamela Morgan Mitchell. Hi there, Pamela. So I've noticed for some people I'm literally the smallest or actually the smallest YouTuber you subscribe to. I'm not sure I have found me, but I'm glad you're enjoying the content and thank you for taking the time to uh, allow me to share some of my day with you and your day with me. So we're up to 87. It's been be 11 months and about a week and a bit uh, since I've had my stroke. So not bad, I guess. 87 subscribers in 11 months for a rather niche channel. So let's just talk about your attention, your concentration, and what that looks like after a stroke. So let me just preface this by saying I am not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. Uh, I used to work with acquired brain injury clients many years ago in mental health. Uh, I thought I was kind of prepared for this whole stroke thing. Turns out not so much. So I noticed that the stroke book I got from the Canadian Heart and Stroke Association didn't really cover all the needs and wants I had after my stroke. So I kind of started this channel to initially help document my journey so my friends and family that don't live in the city I'm in can sort of see what I'm going up to. And it's morphed into a bit of my uh, blog and uh, an educational piece. So a lot of people after stroke have an extreme difficulty with paying attention to things and concentrating. So why is that? There's many reasons. Part of that could be post-stroke fatigue. Part of that could be post-stroke anxiety. Part of that could be post-stroke depression. Part of that could be vascular cognitive impairment. Uh, I will leave the links down below to the videos I've done about uh, anxiety, depression, and uh, vascular cognitive impairment. I've recently done a series of videos on post-stroke fatigue, and I'm not going to include the links to those because you can find them quite readily. So attention is your ability to concentrate on something and to do this, your brain needs to decide what to focus on, how to focus on it, where to focus on it, how long to focus on it, right? And your attention can be drawn away or towards the task at hand by particular sights, sounds, feelings, like shiny, squirrel, right? So at that point, you can easily have your attention drawn away from your task at hand due to many reasons. And... When you've had a stroke, sometimes it's significantly harder to pay attention to things. Because, like me, for example, I have extreme sensitivity to ambient noise. In a very noisy environment, I have difficulty focusing out, filtering out those ambient noises and paying attention to the task at hand. We'll get to get into discussing my specifics later on. Sometimes we can choose to focus on things, and other times other things may catch us attention. Despite our best efforts, despite our all abilities to ignore things, sometimes after a stroke, just having that ability to filter out or filter in things that you want to pay attention to or ignore can be extremely problem problematic, and if not, just downright difficult. Problems with attention after a stroke are very common, specifically in the first, well, some studies have said few weeks. I'm going to say the first few months. You're going to have extreme difficulty concentrating, right? Uh, especially if the stroke impacted the right side of your brain uh, and there was there so your left side of the body is impacted um, so you may need to pay attention to things so for example all of us after strokes have significantly more doctor's appointments than you might enjoy every single doctor's appointment I have had since my stroke I brought um, a notepad in with I brought in a notepad in so I know what I want to talk about and I need to take notes. I've actually had my GP tell me, you need to pay attention to me and stop writing things down. And my, my response to him was, no, by me writing this down, I'm actually paying attention to you 
and it will help me remember the things that I need to remember. So I'm then paying strict concentration to him and I'm paying strict attention to what he's saying by being engaged on a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me and him and I'm listening to what he's saying. I might not be looking at his face, but I'm intently listening to what he's saying and I'm writing it down. Okay. Struggling to remember things makes it extreme, extremely hard to concentrate. Struggling to remember things, struggling to do things can bring on fatigue. So you may have difficulty in deciding what to pay attention to. You may have difficulty in deciding how to filter things out, right? You may also feel like though you might be switching off during conversations or events that might be happening around you. Well, let's go back to the video we did on post-stroke fatigue. You may need to take breaks, right? You may need to like, you know what? I gotta take time. I'm gonna go outside for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna take a little quiet break. Um, I just need that to regroup. It's not that I'm trying to be disrespectful to you. It's not that I'm trying to avoid having the conversation with you. It's just right now, I do not have the ability to filter out all this background noise and stay meaningfully engaged in the conversation with you. So I would like to just to separate for a few minutes and, and go take a break so I can come back. Right? Tasks like shopping in a grocery store, uh, in a, like, you know, take going to Walmart, take going to Metro. I'm in Canada, so if I'm mentioning places you don't have in your world, that's because you don't have them in your world. Going to Sobeys, going to Shoppers Drug Mart, um, things like that. With all the ambient noise, with all the fluorescent lights, with all the erratic movement around you, that can be extremely difficult. Uh, things such as reading, right? Reading can be taxing at times. Uh, specifically for me, I have difficulty reading at times. Um, sometimes making decisions may be difficult. You may need to read a lot of labels, especially with your medication. So sometimes difficulty in attention like concentration and paying attention can impact your daily activities such as like washing, dressing, your daily hygiene. Uh, might also involve taking your medication when and where you're supposed to. It might involve uh, things such as work or hobbies. Right. So just keep in mind that the more effort you are trying to invest in paying attention, the more effort you are using to invest to maintain concentration, you're going to get fatigued more readily. We will discuss some tips and tricks on maintaining concentration near the end of the video. When you concentrate on something, your brain has to work to screen out everything but that one thing, be that a newspaper, be that a TV show, be that a conversation you're engaged in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I was at, uh, my girlfriend and I were at a friend's house. They're married. They have a six-year-old and a one-year-old. They also had friends over. I was engaged in a conversation with someone. So there's other people around me having conversations. There was some music on. And I had to, at times, fight uh, to, to um, push out all the extra stimulus. I was pretty successful at it. I, I don't think people really noticed, but I know by the end of that day, I was fatigued. Uh, and so trying to pay attention and concentrate on a specific thing for long periods of time, from my experience anyways, can cause fatigue. So a stroke can impact your brain's ability to focus out, tune out, or ignore uh, stimulus that you don't want. Concentration problems are especially, prob uh, especially problematic in the early stages after a stroke. Problems of concentration can impact you on different ways. We all rely on concentration and paying attention for different things, be it um, paying attention to um, cooking a meal, paying attention to when you go to the bank, paying attention to a financial transaction, paying attention to a conversation, you know, paying attention to doing laundry. Right? Many things we do in our daily lives require paying attention. So, and your concentration and your attention, your your ability to maintain concentration, your ability to maintain attention on a specific task at hand can be impacted by how tired you are. If you're in pain, you're currently having an emotional issues like depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress. Um, are you dealing with medication that might be impacting your attention or concentration span? Are you dealing with weather? You know, there's so many reasons that can impact your concentration and your attention. 
So we, now we're going to get into recognizing you might have an issue with concentration. You might have an issue with attention. So filtering out what's going on around you. It may be difficult to chat with someone if you're in a noisy room. It might be difficult to find what you're looking for in a supermarket. Uh, in a supermarket specifically, the ability to maintain uh, concentration, to maintain the focus of your attention on a specific task may become very physically debilitating and very fatiguing in a very quick period of time. Trying to stay focused on a single task like reading a book, watching a television. I know initially after my stroke, I had the attention, pan, attention span of about maybe 15 minutes, you know, if that. Uh, and I wasn't really good to do much beyond that. And that unfortunately was my world for a good couple of months. You may have difficulty moving from one task to another. You may have difficulty returning to a task if interrupted. You may have difficulty returning to the step where you were when you're interrupted. So that might be another sign uh, where you're trying to do things and someone walks into a room and tries to engage you in a conversation. You might have to tell them, hey, wait, whoa, whoa, just wait a minute, I'm almost done. Um, and if they interrupt you, do you have the ability to return exactly back to where you were? Or do you have the ability to even return to that task? Can you multitask? Are you able to do more than one thing at one time? So, for example, are you able to make a sandwich and engage in a conversation with a friend at the same time? Are you able to make a cup of tea and engage in a conversation with someone at the same time? Uh, sometimes when you try to process things too quickly, you may find it hard to take all that information in. You may find it difficult to pay attention and concentrate to the information. So you have difficulty paying attention and staying uh, fixated in the moment, but you're also trying to concentrate to get all the details and it just turns into a blur. Right? So you may need to engage your occupational therapist. You may need to engage a neuropsychologist. Both of those will have the ability to give you specific um, assessments, give you specific uh, coping strategies to help improve your concentration, improve your attention span, but ultimately it could come down just to an issue of time. It just might take a while to do. And that's neither here nor there. That's not your fault. If it takes three months to be able to watch a half an hour video, watch an hour long TV show, so be it. That's, that's not your fault. That's just your stroke in your brain trying to get along, right? So some of the things you may need to do are put labels on things so you can pay attention to them. Some of the things you may need to do could be to create an agenda and we'll get into the, some of that later, right? So one of the things you can attempt to do is label things. Another thing you can attempt to do is keep a diary, right? Another thing you can attempt to do is uh, be referred to a special doctor just to get an assessment to get the help you might need. Now that being said, when we get back into keeping a diary, that goes right back to the post-stroke fatigue video we did when we're putting a label on things. Make it easier so you know where your socks go when you go to put them away, your underwear, your sh shirts, uh, plates go there, forks go there. You may need to do that simply so you can pay attention to completing a task, such as putting away laundry, putting away dishes. Some strategies to improve your attention span and concentration can be things as just as simple as reduce all the possible distractions in your environment as reasonable. Um, at work, they got me a special noise canceling purpose built headset. Without that headset, my life would be a disaster right now. Uh, I would not have the same level of function. I would be extremely fatigued. Me trying to, with the headset that I was originally had, me trying to tune out the world was almost impossible it was just I was coming home and almost immediately going to bed and that's just because I, I couldn't control the level of distraction I wasn't able to tune out the level of background noise and my brain was trying to focus on my task at hand and then also um, trying to weed out all the useless noise that didn't mean anything we're gonna get back to the pronapping agenda so for those of you that have had a stroke you're going to want to take regular breaks, have a nap, take a walk. You're going to want to get on the pro-napping agenda. For some of them, it's going to be meditation. For other people, it could be going for a walk. For other people, it could be deep breathing strategies. You might want to do yoga. You might want to do guided imagery. You're going to need to take some kind of regular rest break. Right? Plan tasks with a simple step-by-step -step approach. Something as simple as, we'll just say making a roast beef dinner, mashed potatoes, 
uh, with um, gravy and Yorkshire puddings. You may need to set a very specific agenda, breaking it down step by step. So if I intend to eat at six o'clock at night, I might start my, my, my agenda at one o'clock in the afternoon. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, I peel potatoes. And then at 1.45, I get the roast ready. And then at two o'clock, the roast goes in. And you've got an agenda set up to help you manage that task. You've broken it down into simple step by step. You might have little cue cards with times on it, what you need to do. You might have it on a, uh, a piece of foolscap or a legal pad or whatever you prefer to write on. You're going to want to break jobs down into chunks. It's something very simple and achievable steps. That again goes back to using a step by step approach or possibly setting an agenda. And all of that relates right back to the post stroke fatigue video we did about managing post stroke fatigue. Writing down information using notes and keeping them in specific places. So I have a, a journal that I keep every time I go to the doctor and every time I go to the doctor, I write down notes. So that way I have a record of what we've talked about or what I've wanted to talk about and what the doctor has said. Uh, use a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard on my fridge. Um, it gets used fairly regularly to store information, to plan things, meal planning, uh, appointments, medication changes, things such as that. You might need to get into association techniques, such as if you know you need to take medications specifically with meals, you might want to keep your pill bottles on your kitchen table. You might want to you might want to have label your morning pills breakfast and your lunch pills lunch and your evening pills dinner or whatever you call it. Um, another thing is you're going to want to get into a daily structured routine. And last one, schedule tasks when energy levels and levels of alertness are the greatest. Again, that, that feeds directly back into the managing fatigue video I did about setting an agenda, maybe doing the most daunting tasks at the first part of the day. Set an agenda throughout your day with regularly scheduled break intervals. So everything we're talking about here immediately relates right back into uh, managing post-stroke fatigue. And the last one, eat a healthy diet and maintain effective sleeping habits. So everything I've said here about how to manage your, uh, your concentration, manage your attention span, a lot of it goes right back to the post-stroke fatigue. However, some of it is unique in and of it to itself. But keep in mind, the more effort you engage in trying to maintain attention, the more energy you expend on maintaining concentration, the more likely you are to get fatigued. So in my case, if I go to the supermarket, I'm wearing sunglasses and I'm going to have my earbuds in with my mobile phone and I'm going to put on Podbean or YouTube and I'm going to listen to something just to drown out the music and drown out the background noise. And I can focus on, you know, uh, um, a podcast or I can focus on a video because it's, it's just one specific thing for me to try to ignore, you know, people walking down the aisle and the music and someone calling for cleanup on aisle three and someone yelling price check on something. It just becomes too... Uh, too taxing it becomes too debilitating and I, I just can't do it the headset I have from work without that headset I would not be able to tune out all the conversations there's there's over 300 building people in the building I work at and it's a call center so people are always talking things are always moving things are always going on without that headset I wouldn't be at work that's just that's just the fact of the matter without that headset I wouldn't be at work and then I wear sunglasses because it's fluorescent lights and they help uh, tune out the fluorescent lights. So I understand maintaining concentration. I understand maintaining attention span after a stroke can be extremely difficult, especially in, in the early goings. All I can say is take the breaks when you need them. Set reasonable goals. Create agendas. Do the most difficult part of your day in, in, as early in the day as you can. That way, if you need to take the time, you can take the time. And if you find that you're still having extreme difficulty maintaining your concentration, maintaining attention, please immediately reach out to your occupational therapist, immediately reach out to your neurologist, or immediately get referred to a neuropsychologist and get the help you need. And on that note, if you like what we've been watching over the last almost 10 months, please like, or sorry, 11 months, my mistake, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone going through their own post stroke journey or someone supporting someone going through their own post stroke journey, please point the channel out to them. They might get some value out of this. Uh, if you want to leave a comment down below, please leave a comment down below. If, if you happen to have had a stroke, you're one of my stroke folk, 
and there's something that you do to help maintain your concentration, something you do to help maintain your attention span, please leave a comment down below to share it with the rest of us so we might get some benefit out of your experience. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone, someone who appears to be uh, befuddled, uh, confused, has a lack of balance, someone has vision problems, they can't move their eyes in one direction, they only see in grayscale, they only see like a little dot out of the world, someone who has a facial droop, there's a visual noticeable slacking of the facial muscles, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who has um, difficulty smiling equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.